Sometime in 1985, the composer John Cage appeared on the cover of Contemporary Keyboard Magazine, interviewed by Tom Wheeler. It was a very extensive interview with very interesting questions, and Cage expressed his compositional ideas and approaches in a way that really excited me and was very stimulating for someone young that was trying to compose music. I would have been about 22 years old at the time. I wrote to John Cage, Care of Keyboard Magazine, and they did indeed forward my letter to him, and he received it, and I was rather stunned to receive a reply, and the reply I received read as follows, August 5th, 1985. Thank you for your letter. You may certainly write when you wish. I am very busy, but will answer as soon as I can. Cordially, John Cage. And you can see here that his method of correspondence was to have a, a kind of mimeograph pad where he would have his message to you on one side and he would tear it off and send it to you, but he would have a copy of it and then he would also have a copy of your reply if you tore the mimeograph off and sent it that way. I always, I always kept both parts so that uh, I just it, it was a little bit of a souvenir at that point. I was very happy to be in contact with him. So you can see his address there. He was 101 West 18th Street, New York, New York, 10011. He lived on a, in a very large loft apartment with a lot of plants, hundreds of plants. And his place had been featured in Architectural Digest and whatnot. So his home life was very important to him. And he did a, lo did a lot of work there, but also a lot of work on the road and in between appointments, he would be able to pull out his manuscript and the I Ching and off, often to try to figure out what notes to put where and when. So the next one, I had written him, once he'd sent me that r message and said I could write to him, I had written my questions. And a lot of it concerned with my concern about self-consciousness as a writer and feeling that I was already prejudging my work and in a sense listening to it and writing it in a critical way as if I were a critic basically and that I trusted other people's opinions more than my own and that I was able to listen to things as a listener that I accepted from another composer, but if I would have written them, it probably wouldn't have passed and I would have stopped writing at that point. So I had these kinds of questions in my young mind and I wrote him about it. So he says, your questions revolve around feelings. Why do I trust others? I'm overly concerned. I also had mentioned I would wanted to be more spontaneously truthful in my writing, which basically is the path I've taken with improvisation, I feel. But he says, your questions resolve around your feelings. Why do I trust others overly concerned, spontaneously truthful, rather than around music? You will feel more confidence if you concern yourself with some musical questions or, or situations in which you are actually interested I don't have copies for sale of my books. They can be obtained through Wesleyan University, Press, Middletown, Connecticut, 06457. I'd also sent him a composition of mine on staff paper that I'd written out. And while he doesn't make any mention of the content of the manuscript, he does, and he was very interested in the calligraphy and layout of things, so he commented on that. The B-flat key signature should appear on each staff, and the F in the bass second staff, second measure, must be sharp, and then some sharp, some natural should be, should appear for the F in the treble, third measure, and the C, fourth measure. But your handwriting is quite good, though the sharps are not well 
placed in front of the notes to which they appear. Best wishes, John Cage. So I had sent him a piece, I believe, that I'd written in honor of Percy Granger's birthday, and that's what he was commenting on there. Let's see if I can find this next one. I'd written and asked him about his teacher, Arnold Schoenberg, and what he had learned, what he remembered. This is March 22nd, 1988, so it had been going on for a couple of years. He said, I think about all I think of regarding Schoenberg in Mosaic, in article in A Year from Monday, page 43. Let me know if you have already read that. However, if you have, I will be hard-pressed to know what more to tell you. And then he adds, because I'd asked him about this, My favorite Zen book is the Huang Po Doctrine of Universal Mind, not the Grove Press, but the earlier Buddhist Society of London edition, cordially John Cage. So fortunately for me, despite having lost a lot of possessions and having lost these original correspondences, all of his letters and things he wrote were kept in Northwestern University Library, and I was able to write to them and ask them to give me copies, and they, they did. But then here at the end, just so you get a sense, is a picture of me at age 20, 20 in Norway with Philippe Catrin, the great Belgian guitarist, my favorite guitar player at the time. You can see I'm very happy. We got to hang out for a day and a half, and uh, he let me play his guitar, and come to the sound check, everything. So we've known each other since then, since 1983. I posted some clips of him demonstrating homecomings in Melin earlier on my channel. And then this final picture is, we were called the Mele Kaliki Maka Serenaders, recorded in Hawaii. From left to right, that's Henry Kaiser, uh, slack key guitarist Raymond Kane, myself, and Richard Thompson. This would have been about 1991 or two, I think. And we recorded a song called Po Laie on a compilation called All Through the Year on the Green Linnet label, which is rather hard to find now. But uh, we wrote out the lyrics of the Hawaiian lyrics in phonetics on big cards, and Richard sang it phonetically without having any idea what, it's, what it meant. And Raymond and his wife Elodia helped with the translation and all of that. So that was a nice collaboration and wonderful to play with those people. I'll put a link to, I toured as a member of the Henry Kaiser Quartet, and there is about a two and a half hour gig on YouTube now, and I will put a link in the description below if you have any interest in that. If you've listened this long, I thank you for that. I'm trying to share some things I'm finding in the archives here. I've had a lot of nice experiences with very great musicians, so trying to bring some of that to you. And I do wish you a very good day.